Hey everyone, my name is Chloe and today I'm here to do a wonderful collaboration with my friend Shannon from Pages and Polish and if you guys aren't following her, please do. She lives in Canada and I'm not sure where exactly in Canada, but like they start getting snow so early. Like I am always cold when I watch her videos, but I love them and they're so like she makes that feel really cozy and I just love it and I have like wanderlust when I watch her videos and she does a lot of like read-alongs and vlogs and she does all sorts of different things. She is wonderful and if you have not watched her, I would highly recommend you do. But today her and I are both going to be posting videos talking about holiday tropes we love. So there are a lot of tropes that you see in books but specifically in holiday books you see them frequently and there are some that I just love for there's some reason that I am drawn to Christmas books and a lot of people are drawn to Christmas books and I think the prevalence of these tropes is part of the reason so I've got six tropes that I love and I'm going to tell you a book at least one that has that trope and a movie or a show or something you can watch so you can read or watch this trope and then I've got two that I wish there was more of. So let's just get into it. The first one is like family all coming back together. A bunch of siblings, maybe some secrets, maybe things that are going on. Just family all coming back together to the family home or what, wherever and kind of talking about the past year. So there are lots and lots and lots of stories with this trope. Two of my favorites are the Winter Street series by Ellen Hildebrand. And then also Christmas Sisters by Sarah Morgan. I really love both of those. Winter Street is a four book series and it follows the same family over and over and every year they come home for Christmas and the family owns an inn and so it's just very like cozy and great and the family has a lot going on and it's a very good, very good story in my opinion. Then Christmas Sisters is about three sisters who come together for Christmas and their story and it is my favorite Sarah Morgan holiday book that I have read so far. I love it and would highly recommend it. Then for movies, of course, I have two too because this is just, this is probably the most common trope, but the two movies I'm going to say are The Family Stone, which is both funny and emotional and it's full of like very well-known actors and I really like that one. And then also This Christmas and it's another one that I love. I saw it in the theaters with my mom, and now I have to watch it at least once a year. It is one of my favorites, and Chris Brown singing This Christmas is one of my favorite versions. And so if you have not seen those movies, definitely add them to your holiday watch list. The next one is Stuck in an Airport. So a bunch of people are trying to get somewhere for Christmas and they get stuck in the airport. And I just love that trope. I love it because it creates like this weird sense of community and camaraderie with all these strangers that you're stuck with. And I just think it's so great. And the book that I'm going to talk about is one that I just recently read. It's a new release and a debut release. It is The Mistletoe Connection by Chelsea Pennington. And you guys are probably sick to death of hearing me talk about this book, but I loved it. These people are stuck in an airport on Christmas Eve and there's like 10 different stories or something like that and normally when it's like that many people I'm like I don't like this I can't keep people straight their connections don't feel real but this one like you can keep it straight they're all connected in very realistic ways like they don't have like deep long connections the stories just kind of go from one to the other and then like back again and they it's just so good I would highly highly recommend that and for a show and for this trope in something you can watch Full House Season 2, Episode 9, they are trying to go to their grandma's or something and they get stuck in the airport and the kids are all worried like what's going to happen? How is Santa going to find me in this airport? And it's one of the episodes that I just have to watch every Christmas. I love it and it's one of like the early episodes because it's Season 2 and it's just pure goodness. Then the next trope that I love is not necessarily a trope but like big city specifically New York City stories I love. I have been to New York once in the like winter time. It was actually when I was really, really pregnant with Ainsley. Um, I, we went in November and she was born in January. So I was really pregnant and we went and it was just so magical. Like for such a big kind of dirty city. I mean, it's not a dirty city, but all cities are 
there's a lot of people. It, it just transforms into something magical between the tree and the ice skating. And I just love New York at Christmas. So if I can read about it or watch it, I will 100% do that. So the two books I'm going to mention are Silver Bells. And this one is about a man who sells Christmas trees like in New York and in the city. And it's about his son. And um, it's not my favorite book, but the atmosphere in it is great. And then also the Angels Everywhere series by Debbie McComer, I think is also set in New York City for the most part. I may be wrong about that, but for, for some reason I'm thinking it is. Um, and that's about three angels who just get into all sorts of different things. And so I love those two, but there are so many more. And the two movies I'm going to talk about are, of course, Home Alone 2, which I would say is the best Home Alone. When he goes to New York, his family goes to Florida, and then he is alone in New York. And I just love seeing him go to the toy store, and I love it. I love it so much. The other one that is kind of a Christmas movie, I would say it, it is, is uh, The Family Man with Nicolas Cage. So in that one, it's like an alternate reality kind of thing. He is this businessman, and he like does not want to take Christmas off. Whatever he wants, he's like family schmamly. He had a moment back in his like college days where he decided to let this girl go, and so then he he is visited by somebody and says like, "Dude, kind of your priorities. Let's let's see what would have happened if you would have chosen to keep this girl." and get married and have the suburban life. So in one life, he lives in New Jersey. The other, he lives in New York City. And it's it's a great movie. I love that movie. So those both are strong in the New York vibes. Next is like road trip or travel or something like that. I love seeing people's journey, especially if it's full of hijinks, as they are trying to get wherever they're trying to get for Christmas. So we normally, of course, this is a COVID year, we have a lot of traveling to do as well. And it's always full of hijinks. There's not not ever like a smooth event, like non-eventful trip. And so I just love reading about that. It makes you feel like it's not just you. And I, I really like it. So one that I'm going to talk about is both a movie and a book. And that's Dashing Through the Snow by Debbie McComer. This was not my favorite of hers by any means, but it does have strong like Christmas road trip vibes. The other one is The Christmas Train by David Baldacci. And he, this is a story about a man who has to take this trade trip from A to B because he has been banned from flying. And so then he decides to write a story as he goes. So there's kind of a one who got away that came back. There's a relationship, like, but it's all from this man's perspective as he is traveling. And again, this isn't my favorite um, Christmas book, but it is good and it's got this trope. And so, and as I remember on these books, I like them more than like my Goodreads reviews say I did. So I really love this trope and I feel like that gives them extra cred. The other one that kind of counts is Skipping Christmas by John Grish John Grisham. This one is about a couple who like their neighborhood is all about Christmas. Like they go big and finally their daughter is in college or like She's an adult and she, I think, joins the Peace Corps, so she's not going to be home for Christmas. So they're like, let's just not do Christmas. Let's skip Christmas, go on this cruise or something, and like not do this. And the whole neighborhood is upset with them because they're not doing all the things they're supposed to do. They're not doing the big Santa. They're not doing the lights. They're not doing this and that and the other. And it's just really funny um, them trying to go on this trip. So that is also a movie called Christmas with the Cranks with Tim Allen and Jamie Lee Curtis. And I love the movie. And I think I saw the movie before I saw the book. So I have like this soft spot for the book. There's definitely some like why does the neighborhood care that much. But I also live in a relatively small town where there are certain neighborhoods that do go all, go all out. And I imagine if somebody was like, nope, not doing it, that the neighborhood would care a lot. So I don't know. Um, I think... I, my love for Tim Allen may have like endeared me to this story even more, but I love it. Another one, of course, is the Polar Express. They are on a train, so they are traveling, and um, Tom Hanks is like my love language. I love that man, so Tom Hanks makes that movie for me. Then next is... If there's going to be magical realism in a book, it's going to be a Christmas book. Christmas is the most magical time ever. Santa, his flying reindeer, it's all so magical. And so reading about magical realism in Christmas books is so great. I don't really love it in like other books. As, or I do if it's like light, but like Christmas magic, of course, of course there's Christmas magic. 
So my book that I'm going to talk about for this one is A Magical Christmas by Heather Graham. So this is about a, a married couple who is just struggling in their relationship. And so they see this ad for this like little cabin and so they take their family there for Christmas and there's all sorts of things that happen and go on and there's this historical elements and it's definitely got some magical realism in it and it's just so good and so charming and by the end like oh, it's just so good I don't want to say anymore because of course like with magical realism there's like a kind of twist at the end that you don't see coming and so I really would highly recommend you read that one and for the movie I think it's going to be my all-time favorite, The Santa Claus. So um, in this movie, if you haven't seen it, again, it's a Tim Allen gym. I'm talking about Santa Claus 1, 2, 3, 4, however many there are, aren't as good. But the first one is great. Um, what happens is Santa falls off his roof. So he puts on he puts on the suit to finish the deliveries, and he becomes Santa. So that is it's just my favorite story. I used to watch it over and over and over. My sister and I, she would watch it with me every single night, and we would fall asleep together at the same part every every night and now I watch it a lot of nights to go to sleep it's just so good and I'll watch it all all times of the year because it's like one of my favorite movies period but so good the last trope that I'm going to talk about that I love is fake dating like bringing somebody home to the family that is not your boyfriend fiance whatever it is but you need to have a date for Christmas and so you bring this person home so the book I'm going to talk about is one that I just read it's our totally ridiculous made up Christmas Relationship by Brittany C. Cherry. That is a mouthful, and it is like a novella. It's a short story about exactly that. It's a fake dating story. It's so cute. I would highly, highly recommend it. It's Brittany C. Cherry's only venture into Christmas as of now, and I loved it. Um, as far as movies, there's While You Were Sleeping with Sandra Bullock. She has this crush on this guy, and she saves him from getting like run over by a train. And so then she, when he's in the hospital, he's in a coma and they just assume like that they are together and she like kind of lets the assumption ride and so it's a fake dating situation he wakes up from the coma with no clue what's going on so it's um, not necessarily bringing him home to the family but it's definitely a fake dating situation and then one that is more bringing home to the family is holiday in handcuffs and this has mario lopez and um Melissa Joan Hart, and for those of us who watch, like, Sabrina and Saved by the Bell and all of those shows, like, those two together is amazing. I'm so there for it. And so it's a funny story. Melissa Joan Hart is just kind of crazy, and she, like, takes him home and holiday in handcuffs. I mean, it's it's a, kind of a forced situation, and I love it. So those are the six that I love that you see quite a bit. I can tell you about both books and movies, etc., but there's two that I really wish there was more of. So the first one is like inspiring movies about like random acts of kindness. And I know of a book called The Christmas Jar by Jason F. Wright. And it's so good. It's a it's exactly that. It's about ra random acts of kindness. And I can't think of a movie that deals with that. I'm sure there are some. So if you know of any, let me know. And then the second trope that I would love to see more of is one of my favorite tropes of all time anyway. is like childhood sweethearts. They meet back up because they're both home for Christmas and a relationship starts. I feel like I have read that somewhere, but I can't think of where. And like I know it's not super duper prevalent. So if you know of any books or movies where they're like childhood sweethearts that then come back together at Christmas when they're both home, maybe they live other places or one lives there and one doesn't, let me know because I need that story. So those are my favorite holiday tropes and where you can find them. What are your favorite holiday tropes? Why do you pick up Christmas books or Christmas movies? What is it about it? Is it the magic? Is it the coziness? What is it about stories that you love? Um, Shannon, thank you for suggesting this collaboration. I am so excited to see what your answers are. And that is it. We'll see you in the next one.